Um, for coming again, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you to the performers tonight. It's going to be uh, Takashi Shelfish from CERN. We're going to be diffused by Sam Salem, who uh, actually um, was really instrumental in putting a lot of the CIP plot after the speakers. So thank you for doing that. Um, it's kind of pain, so thank um, There's Richard Knight, he's going to be doing the work that we And we have Hugo uh, Kujini on. Uh, Laptop. Uh, the common thread throughout all of tonight and all of the performers uh, is improvisation. Now that's the uh, audio improvisation. Time Passions has the element of visual improvisation as well, and as part of that is uh, Kate Freeborough. She's an artist and she improvises with the materials around her. She responds to the space. And I can't think, I'm trying to her here. It's kind of out of place because this is mostly like a uh, electronic music heavy set of performers, but she would be a good person to have here just because I can't imagine a situation where she wouldn't be good. And like I, I just I would just want her at any of that basically just improvising, doing anything for it, making it um, something unique. So and that's hopefully what you do with improvisation anyway. You want to be in the moment and you want to make that very special. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about how I came to the name Human Seeking, because it's kind of um, it's something I've been researching this past well, this past couple of years. Um, it's it came to me one night that and it, it's it's a I guess kind of a poem. Uh, the machine functions, machine functioning, human seeking, sublime transmitting. And if all those elements are working together, something amazing can happen. Um, the machine being your body or actual machines. If the human seeks, then they can receive information. And that information is, is supposed to be out there to be received and is being transmitted. So um, it's on the poster, so you can read a bit more about it if you want. Um, also, tonight is completely free. Uh, everybody did put in their time and got here, you know, the people who came all the way from Huddersfield. Uh, so donations are very much appreciated and we split it equally amongst the acts. If you donate one or three pounds, you get posted. So, there's an added incentive for you Anyway, I'm going to take off tonight by showing a video of Kate uh, working. So you get a good sense of what it is she does. And she'll be working back there and around. <laughs> possibly all throughout the night and uh, you're free to engage with her as you beforehand. Um, she will only engage with you if you ask her questions. That's her, her rules of engagement, so it's good to know. Here we go. My artwork that I, my art practice, isn't about changing the world or it's about showing people what is already there. It's about working with idiosyncrasies and it's about me using my intuition and my, my own personal idiosyncrasies, the little routines that I go through every day, um, the habits that I have the fidgeting that I do constantly is all related to my artwork. It's, I've really had to look at what I naturally do in order to pick out what my artwork is. I'm now very aware of the little things I do and just fidgeting with blue tack or lining up pieces of sugar in a cafe. That is what I do and I would have done it anyway but I'm now calling this my art practice
I try not to have an intention. I try to use my instincts and work in a way that is natural to me. Um, in the same way that when I gather the things that I gather, it is because I have some kind of... I'm drawn to them in some way. Um, sometimes I might gather a, gather something and an idea will come into my head uh, about what to do with it. But quite often when this happens, it never goes to plan. Um, not to plan, that, that's the wrong way to put it. Um, quite often when I when I have an idea of how I'm going to use these gathered items, um, these ideas change and are manipulated. And whether that's through the space I'm working in or, or the circumstances or just how I'm feeling that day. I have, for example, last week when Angie um, filmed me, I went into the project space with a, a TV and a DVD player thinking that I would respond to an old film that I had of mys myself merging. But within the space, I was really... In, um, I was drawn to the crack that was in the wall and I just started working with that instead. So sometimes I'll have intentions, but I'm always open-minded and don't set myself the challenge that I need to do what I originally planned. There interest is in um, having laptop performance and exploring that through performance as well. Uh, having that kind of music be a perform have a performative element. Um, so I kind of asked the same thing of Sam because he diffuses and in the past mostly fixed media things. What do you think makes this worth performing in front of an audience? Like why is that interesting for an audience? And what made you want to experiment in this kind of format? I think it's interesting to listen to. Um, improvisation with machines is a dream to this. I think we all can share a similar thing. Um, we all start with you know, kind of traditional musicians, we all go into studios and collect our thoughts. Improvisation, I think, is a big thing. Um, personally, I spent far too many years in the dark of the night making music um, for more audience I didn't know. Uh, the fact that I have to sit here and just people here and I don't know what's going on. You do it and it's done and it's gone. That's, that's cool. Um, and it's different, this, the friendship of the, the group dynamic is really, it's really exciting. So, is that that uh, working alone and you're not good by yourself? This is the learning is not good by yourself. Or is this, a, this environment where we have friendship and we meet regularly and play and that collaborative element I find is really exciting. The thing that makes me feel more inclined to do this more than that. Because I guess it's better to say that well, because we've been playing together how many years now? Three years. So that's that, which is probably. So I probably, I've been doing this longer, I've been doing laptop performance, and this is a group longer than I've probably ever been in a studio, hence in my set of studio performer ever. So, the refreshment so, of the human interaction is really important. Well, something I find really interesting about what you do is, well, you program live, you actually do that, and it's pure improvisation, you're coding, and you actually work with a program that crashes often, and it's kind of built in, and it has all these glitches and things. Um, and 
both of you work to varying degrees with Max and other programs. You want to talk about how you make your own tools and just kind of that interaction with the machine. Whatever. For me personally, I, I don't think my coding skills are that great. Um, but just the fact that when I do something, just the fact that I've done it, I can find you know that I've all pure data and you know the, the open source thing is, is quite important to all of us. Uh, the whole philosophy behind that and the free software thing. Again, the community coming out of that. Um, I could find other people's patches who are far better at programming than I am and you say. But uh, you know, you make your own and it's your own tools and you know all the problems that go into that are what make them your things. But it's it's got a bit of me in it. You know, I, I don't really like you know but in some ways you think if you play the guitar well you don't need to make your guitar, you know, some people do, but you know to be a whole luthier thing. Um, it's, it's like I don't, other people call them instruments. I, I'm still uncomfortable with the idea of being an instrument. It's not, it's, it's more than that to, to me. I think a, an interesting extension idea of the instrument is the fact that we, in, in a very kind of raw way, we actually have identical things, of course, in that we all, we've both brought, we've all brought computers with keyboards and mice and then we haven't brought your. So we are all working with prep pads and ASCII keyboards, yet the, the the software that we're interacting with is incredibly diverse and the hardware the actual, you know, the makes and manufacturers and just all those bits are all very different. That's quite an interesting, interesting way because our instrument interfaces are identical, but every other part of it is then unique from that point onwards and tailored, and well, increasingly tailored to be exactly as we want it to be for what we're what we're wanting to do with it, so well, which I find kind of, kind of, kind of exciting because the, the reason I became so attached to kind of white coding in this kind of performance kind of situation is the fact that I, I know that I like to refer to it as infinite sonority, but my laptop can do anything I want it to do. And the idea is, I like, if I then run a program on top of it which makes a whole lot of decisions for me already, then I've already limited everything down to a small subset, whether it's by Programming it by programming it from the base up, it's possible for me to make it do anything as part of this performance today, which is which is nice having that, you know, being able to go anywhere with it when you sit down is is daunting but incredibly exciting at the same time and very kind of demanding to work with, which I enjoy as a challenge. I think. That's it. Great. Uh, can you guys turn on these lamps just because the sun's going down? Uh, there's switches on the sides. All right. Well, thanks for that, guys. Uh, feel free to start whenever you like. Okay, we're going to take a short break, bring in some more chairs, because uh, there are more people. And uh, we'll have Richard Knight and uh, a short uh, video improvisation by Dinesh de Rivero, in just a few minutes. Video. Video first. Video first, and then you. Video. Uh, Eleven minutes. Cool. There he is. Instrument. 
Um, so she's, she's given us just a bit of information about that. So I'm just going to play a video, it's 11 minutes long, um, or, or she'll speak and then do a bit of recording on it. So the um, so I got the idea from the hydrophonium from um, well it's kind of like a version of an installation a sound installation that I did that was based on a short story by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez a Colombian writer and a magical realist. And in the story, there are these kids that end up um, drowning, like dying in light. They, they break light bulbs and the light comes out like water. And, um, and I really like that uh, idea of just kind of like messing up with one's perception or like senses. And I, so I had this sound installation where I basically had these very large light bulbs that I filled up with water and I put the hydrophones in there and it was a feedback piece. So what you got from the light bulbs was more sound than light and uh, and I like that but then I thought that I wanted to make it something I could play and um, so I started putting it in jars of water and then I instead of messing around with feedback, what I do is that I use uh, Max MSP to um, filter the signal from each hydrophone and uh, I run it through a bandpass filter that I can tune so I can have different scales and I uh, all the tunings are in just intonation so um, this tuning was an 11 uh, prime limit just intonation and it was just one of the scales that I can play, um, which is nice. And um, and so I also process it on Max MSP. I run it through uh, reverb and uh, I loop it, and uh, also some some modulating delay and uh, bit degradation. Um, and it's something that keeps I keep working on and it just it's never going to end it's i'm always adding stuff and taking away stuff so so it's cool it's i it's something that um i have enjoyed the process of making it and at times it's a struggle um to feel like it's an instrument that i can play but at times I, I can totally get lost playing it and I use it more like an instrument than just a project that I've been working on for years. So, I... Ella yeah. <laughs>
tenía que ser cortico de todas maneras, ya te digo eso. All right, we're back. Uh, Richard Knight is going to perform for us using um, something he's been working on for a very long time, no input mixer. Um, and he's using it as an instrument, which is not its intended use. Um, yeah, so Richard, did you want to just say a bit about it just before you go into it? Sure, yeah. Basically, as you've said, is, uh, well, what I've got here are two mixers and seven audio mixers. Uh, something that I've been using for quite a long time with a sound engineer and computer music background. So to, to make a discovery by uh, a true experiment with it, that you can actually turn these uh, typically sort of passive audio devices which uh, you know, run the uh, instruments or computer through to balance the levels. Um, the true sort of short circuit and you can actually make it into uh, an active, expressive instrument which is basically akin to uh, a very raw synthesizer. It's the same principle that's used in uh, some, some types of oscillator, a like sine oscillator. So um, the basic premise of a, a sine oscillator is a feedback loop. And uh, that's essentially what I'm recreating by short circuiting the mixer by plugging it back into the cell. So there are several outputs and several inputs. I've got three on each of these that connect back into themselves and then one of these gets into the mixer, uh, which allows three separately controllable feedback loops. Um, things get very interesting when um, you, you start cross-modulating the loops with each other and feeding one mix into another. You can get some very unpredictable and strange results, um, which, you know, after using a mixer as a mixer for so long, it's kind of astounding to uh, you know, hear, the, hear the actual character of the device itself. Uh. Richard Knight, everybody, Richard Knight. <laughs> something I've pretty much always wanted to do since I started doing this is um, feel the sounds in space as I'm working on the canvas which I imagine to be uh, an imaginary type of space as well. Um, the best way to experience it, obviously there are speakers all around us. The sweet spot is Sam working with us. Where you <laughs> of course. Uh, so if you're outside, there's more room over here. It might be better even crowded. Um, I promise to try to not get paint on you. <laughs> Instrument. 
So he's kind of said that for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess all that's left is for you guys to see what it is I do. So we'll start doing that.
videos. Uh, we've also recorded it. I've asked all the performers beforehand, and it's all going to be under Creative Commons, which is excellent. So you can download certain sections and mix it up, do whatever you want with it. It's, it's out there now, as soon as I put it up. So. Um, I think that's it. Does anybody have anything else to add? Thanks so much. Oh, no, what's up, Rana? Hi. Um, what was the Wii controller doing? The Wii controller? Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> I'm talking about, it's something I made. It's a uh, Max Patch that I've worked on. I uh, controlled it using the Wii mode and my breath, and it was um, selecting different modes um, <coughs> for the light. For the light? Yeah. Behind? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very loud. Thank you. And that concludes this evening. Thank you guys for coming.